These are in listen-only mode. Hello, my name is Greg Waugh. I'm the uh, Executive Director of the South Atlantic Council. I'm going to be going through uh, what is presentation number two of five COBIA presentations that we have uh, that will lay out the information that we're going to be discussing at our COBIA Q&A meeting on May 9th in uh, Kitty Hawk. Um, and we would urge you to look through these ahead of time. And it would really be best if you went through them in order. There's a lot of information to cover uh, with COBIA. So we started managing COBIA in 1983. Uh, there was one stock from Texas through North Carolina. Uh, the MSY was a little over a million pounds, and we set a size limit of 33-inch uh, fork length. In 1985, we set the fishing year equal to the calendar year, clarified that the minimum size limit was either 33-inch fork length or 37-inch total length, and we put in an overfish definition. In 87, we established commercial and for hire permits from the time period April through March each year. 89, we prohibited drift gill nets. Uh, they, they were targeting king mackerel, uh, but, but there was some bycatch. Uh, 1990, the MSY was specified as 1 million pounds. And at that time, we noted that the average catch from 81 to 89 was almost 2 million pounds. So we're, we were uh, harvesting in excess of the MSY at that time. We revised the overfish definition and added an overfishing definition, added COBIA to the stock assessment process. And given that we had those high catches above MSY, we uh, established a two per person per day uh, bag limit with a one day limit. And this applies to both recreational and commercial fishing. In 92, uh, there were issues with using two different measures of the minimum size, so we went back to just 33-inch fork length. Uh, the 92 mackerel stock assessment panel updated the MSY for COBIA and raised it to 2.2 million pounds. And in 1996, reflecting the increased catches of COBIA in north of North Carolina, we extended the range through the Mid-Atlantic Council's area up through New York. And again, we, we had kept the MSY at 2.2 million pounds. Uh, then in 98, uh, we specified spawning potential ratio or SPR values for overfishing and overfish, but for the biomass parameters, the overfish determination, that was rejected. And SPR refers to the amount uh, it, it's comparing the spawning that's in the population now compared to it if it was unfished. And MSY is unknown. The optimum yield or OY was all harvest while keeping the SPR equal to or greater than 40% static SPR. If that level uh, is long got down to 30% or below, it would be overfishing. There was no overfishing if it was greater than uh, 30%. And the threshold level was 10%. The Atlantic SPR was unknown. We didn't have enough information at that time to specify. Gulf SPRs indicated they were below uh, 20%. Uh, in Amendment 18, uh, this was a big amendment reflecting changes to the Magnuson-Stevens Act. Uh, it required the councils to set uh, acceptable biological catches, annual catch limits, and to limit both the recreational and commercial sectors to those catch limits. Up to that time, we were using quota management on the, rec on the commercial side and just bags and size limits seasons on the recreational side. But in order to comply with the Magnuson-Stevens Act, we had to specify recreational quotas. And so in determining how we came up with these uh, acceptable biological catch values, we went back and looked at assessments uh, that we had at that time. The most recent uh, Atlantic COBE assessment was from 95. Uh, they also assessed golf then. 
The genetics at that time indicated there was one stock, so there's enough exchange uh, at that time that we've been using the methods that we felt there was one stock. But the they grow slower and live longer in the South Atlantic, and that supported two groups. And so the scientists assessed this as two management groups. And again, we only had SPRs for the Gulf, and they were less than 20%. And because the current yield at that time in 95 for both areas was at MSY, the macro stock assessment panel recommended no change in management. Now, there was a more recent COBIA assessment done for the Gulf, in 2001 by the Southeast Fishery Science Center. That concluded it was not overfished and there was no overfishing. And so the councils use this to separate migratory groups. And, and you'll see that in a moment. In Amendment 18, we also removed Cerro, Little Tunny, and Dolphin from the Fishery Management Unit or FMU. We removed bluefish in the Gulf only from the FMU because Bluefish in the Atlantic are managed uh, along the entire Atlantic coast. These species were removed because we felt at that time there was no need for federal management. So again, we implemented two different migratory groups and, and we did this in large part because the Southeast Fishery Science Center had assessed Gulf migratory group using a council boundary. And so we adopted those boundaries. So the Gulf group was Texas through the Florida West Coast. The Atlantic migratory group was the Florida East Coast through New York. Again, MSY uh, was unknown. The overfishing level or OFL was unknown, but we used total ACL to determine overfishing. Now to specify these acceptable biological catch values, the council requested updated stock assessments. But due to resource limitations, the Southeast Fishery Science Center couldn't provide those updated assessments, and they recommended the Scientific and Statistical Committees, or SSCs, use average landings to determine the Atlantic and Gulf uh, ABCs. And we use basically the same method for both groups. The Gulf Migratory Group ABC was 1.46 million pounds, and they decided not to split recreational and commercial, so there's just one lump. Uh, ABC and ACL. In the Atlantic, we used the average of 2000 through 2009 Florida East Coast to North Carolina landings, plus 1.5 times the standard deviation of those landings. And the standard deviation refers to the amount of variation or spread in your landings each year. If they're very consistent, that number is much smaller. And so the Atlantic ABC was 1.57, slightly higher than the Gulf. And that's probably due to some of those higher landings that are coming out of the Gulf. The Gulf was probably depressed, uh, the stock was depressed some. And we, in the Atlantic, we decided to allocate between recreational and commercial based on 50% of the land, average landings from 2000 to 2008 reflecting historical time period and 50% on the landings from 2006 through 2008 representing the more recent time period. And that came out to 98% being harvested by the recreational and 2% by the commercial. So you apply those percentages to our ACL ABC and you come out with a rec ACL of, of a little over 1.4 million pounds, a rec ACT a little over 1.1, Commercial ACL, 125,712 pounds. Another important component was accountability measures, or AMs. Uh, in addition to your management measures, like our, our size limit and bag limit, that we use to, to keep the, the recreational catch down, uh, we also have to specify these AMs. On the commercial side, we have better data more timely data, and so we track the commercial landings. We close that sector if the quota is met or projected to be met. <clears throat> if there's an overage, they have to, the commercial sector has to pay back that overage if the stock is overfished and the total ACL is exceeded. On the recreational side, we did it slightly different. We don't get the recreational numbers as quickly, and so 
if the recreational and total ACL is exceeded, then we shorten the following season. And to do this, we compare uh, the landings in one year, the first time to the ACL. In year two, we average the two years. Then in the third year on, we use a moving three-year average. Unless we change the ACL, and then we would restart using one year. And this, this will become very important in a few minutes. And at that time, we did this across the board for, for uh, many of our species. On the recreational side, payback if overfished and the total ACL uh, is exceeded. And we didn't change our management measures. The, the 33 inch fork length size limit, two per person per day with a one day limit for rec and commercial. And they have to land the fish intact. So how did we do with uh, these ACLs? Uh, this link, you can copy this and paste it into a browser and go to the NIMS website where they have all their quota monitoring data. And this is where I got that information from. So in 2012, the recreational catch was just a little over a million pounds under the REC ACL. 2013, we were under. And 2014, we were under. So for these three years, our, our regulations, our size limit and bag limit, we're doing a good job of keeping catches below the recreational ACL. On the commercial side, we were slightly over in 2012, and that's probably due to some late reports that came in. 2013, we were uh, under. And then 2014, we approached the uh, quota. It was projected to be met, so it was closed on December 11, 2014. But there was some overage, uh, again, probably due to late reporting. Then we had a CDAR stock assessment uh, for COBIA for Atlantic and Gulf. It was done in 2013 using data through 2011. A part of this stock assessment and the details are included in a separate presentation that I'd urge you to, to take a look at. Uh, the data workshop, they looked at the stock identification information and there were the new techniques, new data showed that there was a mixing zone on the Florida Northeast coast. And uh, looking at that information, where to set that boundary, the groups concluded it would be better to set it at the Georgia Florida line. And so the new boundary for the Atlantic group was Georgia North. Uh, the assessment was conducted using that and the Florida East Coast was included now in the Gulf group. And so the review panel approved that. And again, there's an extensive review process associated with CDAR, and that's covered in that separate presentation. The SSC approved the assessment as well. And so we had an MSY for the Atlantic of 808,000 pounds, the Gulf 2.9 million pounds. And, and so this reflects probably that Gulf group recovering from those high landings and the overall higher productivity in the Gulf versus the Atlantic. And we see this with a number of other species. Uh, the OFL and ABC values are in millions of pounds. Another requirement of the Magnuson Act is this uh, acceptable biological catch is set and that's a cap. The council can't exceed these values. Uh, and so you can see that we set our ACL, our annual catch limit, equal to these. Uh, but this is the maximum landings that the council can allow. And so for the Atlantic in 2014, that ABC is 0.73 million pounds or 730,000 pounds. Declined in 2015 to 690,000 pounds. And then declines to 670,000 pounds in 2016. Um, and it stays at, at that for 2017 onwards. Gulf, higher ABCs, and, and theirs are increasing slightly. So in 2014, it was 2.46 million pounds, 2015, 2.52, and then 2016 onwards stays at 2.6. And so in Amendment 20B that we completed in 2014 and was became effective, the regulations became effective March 1, 2015, we implemented the results of that uh, CDAR assessment. Uh, we set two migratory groups 
uh, Texas through the Florida East Coast and uh, Georgia, and that should be through New York, Georgia to New York. Uh, we kept the 98% rec, 2% commercial based on, again, on 50% of the historical landings, 50% of the more recent landings at that time. MSY was 808,000 pounds, the OFL values, the ABC values, and again, the council set the ACL equal to the ABC, which is the highest level they could set it at. Uh, and it, it does decrease from 2015, 690,000 pounds, 2016 is 670,000 pounds, and it stays at that level. Rec ACL went from 630 to 620,000 pounds in 2016 and will stay at that level. The commercial went from 60,000 pounds in 2015 to 50,000 pounds in 2016. We did not change the accountability measures, but remember that provision that says if you change your ACL, you start over just using one year. And so we updated the ACL. And so we're required then to use the one year data. So we look at 2015 data. Again, we, the paybacks if overfish and the total catch exceeds the total ACL. And we did not change our regulations. Still 33 inch fork length, two per person per day with a one day limit. And you have to land the fish in time. So how did we do with uh, our catch monitoring for Amendment 20B and these new values? Again, you can uh, go paste this into your browser or click on it if that works. Uh, and the details of what happens with 20B and the closure are covered in a separate presentation. And I'd urge you to look at that uh, at some point as well. What I've included here are the recreational annual catch limit and catch commercial, same information. And there's been a lot of interest in what values are set on the Florida East Coast. So I've included some of those. So for 2015, again, it's Georgia through New York. That's the Atlantic uh, migratory group. The rec ACL is 630,000 pounds. And the rec catch was 1.54 million pounds. So significantly above, uh, over twice as high. And so what that does is, remember we just compare the landings in 2015 to the rec ACL for the first year after you change your ACL. So that triggers the accountability measure and the recreational season for 2016 needs to be shortened to ensure that we don't exceed the ACL for 2016, which is uh, 630,000 pounds. Um, check one number real quick here. Yeah, that should be 620,000 pounds in uh, 2016. So I'll fix that on the PDF version that will be posted because it decreases from 630,000 pounds in 2015 to 620,000 pounds in 2016. We don't have any estimate of the catches yet in 2016. And so uh, we aim for the recreational ACT to calculate the length of this closure. And so federal recreational fishing will close June 20th, 2016. How do we do on the commercial side? Well, in 2015, the Atlantic, uh, the catch was just under the quota. For the Florida East Coast, the catch was just under the quota. On the recreational side, significantly below. And we've had people ask, well, can we transfer some of these fish in the quota uh, to the Atlantic? And the answer is no, we can't because this gulf, that's a separate stock. We manage it, but it's a separate stock and we have to manage it separately based on the science that we have. And thus far uh, in 2016, we've got a little bit of commercial landings coming in uh, from the Atlantic and on the Florida East Coast. So again, th this sort of leaves you with what we did in Amendment 20B. There's a separate presentation that goes into detail on 20B 
and the closure and addresses some questions that, that we've had. And again, this is uh, presentation number two of five COBIA presentations. I'd urge you to, to make sure and look at all of them and it'd probably be best if you look at them in order and, and do that prior to our May 9, 2016 uh, Q&A session in uh, Kitty Hawk. So thanks for uh, looking at this and hope to either see you there uh, or uh, on the webinar. Thank you.